Question 183. Which of the following can you use to set spending thresholds? And the options are A. Azure Policy B. Azure TCO C. Azure Cost Management plus Billing D. Azure Pricing Calculator And the correct answer is option C. Azure Cost Management plus Billing Explanation From the official Azure documentation, with Azure products and services, you only pay for what you use. As you create and use Azure resources, you are charged for the resources. Because of the deployment ease for new resources, the cost of your workloads can jump significantly without pay proper analysis and monitoring. We use cost management plus billing features to conduct billing administrative tasks such as paying your bill, manage billing access to cost, download cost and uses data that was used to generate your monthly invoice. Proactively apply data analysis to your cost. Set spending thresholds. Identify opportunities for workload changes that can optimize your spending. Next question. Azure Cosmos DB is an example of a Dash offering. And the options are A. Platform as a Service PaaS B. Serverless Computing C. Infrastructure as a Service IaaS D. Software as a Service SaaS And the correct answer is option A. Platform as a Service Explanation From the official Azure documentation, Azure Cosmos DB is an example of Platform as a Service. Azure Cosmos DB is a fully managed NoSQL database for modern app development. Single digit millisecond response times and automatic and instant scalability guarantee speed at any scale. Business continuity is assured with SLE backed availability and enterprise grade security. App development is faster and more productive thanks to turnkey multi region data distribution anywhere in the world, open source APIs, and SDKs for popular languages. As a fully managed service, Azure Cosmos DB takes database administration off your hands with automatic management, updates, and patching. It also handles capacity management with cost-effective serverless and automatic scaling options that respond to application needs to match capacity with demand. Next question. Which of the following can help you manage multiple Azure subscriptions? And the options are A. Resource Groups B. Policies C. Management Groups D. Blueprints and the correct answer is option C. Management Groups. Explanation From the official Azure documentation, if you have only a few subscriptions, it's fairly easy to manage them independently. But what if you have many subscriptions? Then you can create a management group hierarchy to help manage your subscriptions and resources. For your subscriptions, Azure management groups help you efficiently manage access, policies, and compliance. Each management group contains one or more subscriptions. Azure arranges management groups in a single hierarchy. You define this hierarchy in your Azure Active Directory tenant to align with your organization's structure and needs. The top level is called the root management group. You can define up to six levels of management groups in your hierarchy. Only one management group contains a subscription. Azure provides four levels of management scope. Number one, management groups. Number two, subscriptions. Number three, resource groups. Number four, resources. If you apply any access or policy at one level in the hierarchy, it propagates down to the lower levels. A resource owner or subscription owner can't alter an inherited policy. This limitation helps improve governance. This inheritance model lets you arrange the subscriptions in your hierarchy, so each subscription follows appropriate policies and security controls. Next question. You have managed a web app that you developed and deployed on-prem for a long time, but would now like to move it to Azure and relieved of all the manual administration and maintenance. Which of the following buckets would be most suitable for your use case? 
and the options are a software as a service b infrastructure as a service c database as a service d platform as a service and the correct answer is option d platform as a service explanation from the official azure documentation azure app service is a platform as a service offering that lets you create web and mobile apps for any platform or device and connect to data anywhere in the cloud or on premises app service includes the web and mobile capabilities that were previously delivered separately as azure websites and azure mobile services next question as the cloud admin of your organization you want to block your employees from accessing your apps from specific locations which of the following can help you achieve this and the options are a azure single sign on sso b azure sentinel c azure active directory conditional access d azure role based access control rbac and the correct answer is option c azure active directory conditional access explanation from the official azure documentation the modern security perimeter now extends beyond an organization's network to include user and device identity organizations can use identity driven signals as part of their access control decisions conditional access brings signals together to make decisions and enforce organizational policies azure ad conditional access is at the heart of the new identity driven control plane conditional access policies at their simplest are if then statements if a user wants to access a resource then they must complete an action example a payroll manager wants to access the payroll application and is required to do multi factor authentication to access it next question which of these approaches is not a cost saving solution and the options are a use the correct and appropriate instance size based on current workload b use reserved instances with azure hybrid c load balancing the incoming traffic d making use of azure cost management and the correct answer is option c load balancing the incoming traffic explanation load balancing is done to increase the overall availability of the application not to optimize cost next question dash service is available to transfer on premises data to blob storage when large data sets or network constraints make uploading data over the wire unrealistic and the options are a azure data box b azure file sync c azure blob storage d azure data factory and the correct answer is option a azure data box explanation from the official azure documentation azure blob storage is microsoft's object storage solution for the cloud Blob storage is optimized for storing massive amounts of unstructured data. Unstructured data is data that doesn't adhere to a particular data model or definition such as text or binary data. Blob storage is designed for serving images or documents directly to a browser, storing files for distributed access, streaming video and audio, writing to log files, storing data for backup and restored disaster recovery and archiving storing data for analysis by an on premises or azure hosted service a number of solutions exist for migrating existing data to blob storage azure data box service is available to transfer on premises data to blob storage when large data sets or network constraints make uploading data over the wire unrealistic depending on your data size you can request azure data box disk Azure Data Box or Azure Data Box heavy devices from Microsoft. You can then copy your data to those devices and ship them back to Microsoft to be uploaded into Blob Storage. EZ Copy is an easy to use command line tool for Windows and Linux that copies data to add from Blob Storage across containers or across storage accounts. For more information about EZ Copy, see Transfer Data with the EZ Copy V10. and more next question dash 
allows you to implement your system's logic into readily available blocks of code that can run any time you need to respond to critical events. And the options are A. Azure Functions B. Azure Cognitive Services C. Azure Kinect DK D. Azure Application Insights E. Azure Quantum And the correct answer is option A. Azure Functions Explanation From the official Azure documentation, Azure Functions is a serverless solution that allows you to write less code, maintain less infrastructure, and save on cost. Instead of worrying about deploying and maintaining servers, the cloud infrastructure provides all the up-to-date resources needed to keep your applications running. You focus on the pieces of code that matter most to you and Azure Functions handles the rest. Azure Functions provides compute on demand in two significant ways. First, Azure Functions allows you to implement your system's logic into readily available blocks of code. These code blocks are called functions. Different functions can run anytime you need to respond to critical events. Second, as requests increase, Azure Functions meets the demand with as many resources and function instances as necessary, but only while needed. As requests fall, any extra resources and application instances drop off automatically. Next question. Which of the following can help you download cost and uses data that was used to generate your monthly invoice? And the options are A. Azure Advisor B. Azure Resource Manager C. Azure Monitor D. Azure Cost Management And the correct answer is option D. Azure Cost Management Explanation From the official Azure documentation, by using the Microsoft Cloud, you can significantly improve the technical performance of your business workloads. It can also reduce your cost and the overhead required to manage organizational assets. However, the business opportunity creates a risk because of the potential for waste and inefficiencies that are introduced into your cloud deployments. Cost management plus billing is a suite of tools provided by Microsoft that help you analyze, manage, and optimize the cost of your workloads. Using the suite helps ensure that your organization is taking advantage of the benefits provided by the cloud. With Azure products and services, you only pay for what you use. As you create and use Azure resources, you are charged for the resources. Because of the deployment ease of for new resources, the cost of your workloads can jump significantly without proper analysis and monitoring. You use cost management plus billing features too. Conduct billing administrative tasks such as paying your bill. Manage billing access to cost. Download cost and uses data that was used to generate your monthly invoice. Proactively apply data analysis to your cost. Set spending thresholds. Identify opportunities for workload changes that can optimize your spending. Next question. Dash is a strategy that employs a series of mechanisms to slow the advance of an attack that's aimed at acquiring unauthorized access to information. Each layer provides protection so that if one layer is breached, a subsequent layer is already in place to prevent further exposure. And the options are A. Defense in series B. Defense in steps C. Defense in depth D. Defense in layers And the correct answer is Option C. Defense in Depth Explanation From the official Azure documentation, Defense in Depth is a strategy that employs a series of mechanisms to slow the advance of an attack that's aimed at acquiring unauthorized access to information. Each layer provides protection so that if one layer is breached, a subsequent layer is already in place to prevent further exposure. Microsoft applies a layered approach to security both in its physical data centers and across Azure services. The objective of defense in depth is to protect information and prevent it from being stolen by individuals who aren't authorized to access it. Next question. As the owner of streaming platform deployed on Azure, you notice a huge spike in traffic whenever a new web series is released but moderate traffic otherwise. Which of the following is a clear benefit of this type of workload? And the options are A. Load balancing B. High latency 
C. High availability. D. Elasticity. And the correct answer is option D. Elasticity. Explanation. Elasticity in this case is the ability to provide additional compute resource when needed spikes and reduce the compute resource when not needed to reduce cost. Load balancing and high availability are also great advantages this streaming platform would enjoy. But elasticity is the option that best describes the workload in the question. Auto scaling is an example of elasticity. Next question. Which of the following can repeatedly deploy your infrastructure throughout the development life cycle and have confidence your resources are deployed in a consistent manner? And the options are A. The Azure API Management Service B. Azure Resource Manager Templates C. Azure Templates D. Management Groups And the correct answer is option B. Azure Resource Manager Templates Explanation Azure Resource Manager Templates is correct since templates are independent same which means you can deploy the same template many times and get the same resource types in the same state. Next question. Dash asynchronously replicates the same applications and data across other Azure regions for disaster recovery protection. And the options are A. Auto region replicas B. Auto region replication C. A cross region replication. D. Cross region replication. And the correct answer is option D. Cross region replication. Explanation From the official Azure documentation, to ensure customers are supported across the world, Azure maintains multiple geographies. These discrete demarcations define a disaster recovery and data residency boundary across one or multiple Azure regions. Cross-region replication is one of several important pillars in the Azure business continuity and disaster recovery strategy. Cross-region replication builds on the synchronous replication of your applications and data that exist by using availability zones within your primary Azure region for high availability. Cross-region replication asynchronously replicates the same applications and data across other Azure regions for disaster recovery protection. Some Azure services take advantage of cross-region replication to ensure business continuity and protect against data loss. Azure provides several storage solutions that make use of cross-region replication to ensure data availability. For example, Azure Geo-Redundant Storage replicates data to a secondary region automatically. This approach ensures that data is durable if the primary reason isn't recoverable. Next question. Which of the following is a Cloud Security Posture Management CSPM and Cloud Workload Protection Platform CWPP for all of your Azure on-premises and multi-cloud Amazon AWS and Google GCP resources? And the options are A. Azure Sentinel B. Microsoft Defender for Cloud C. Azure Key Vault D. Azure DDoS Protection E. Azure Front Door And the correct answer is option B. Microsoft Defender for Cloud Explanation From the official Azure documentation, Microsoft Defender for Cloud is a cloud security posture management and cloud workload protection platform for all of your Azure on-premises and multi-cloud resources. Defender for Cloud fills three vital needs as you manage the security of your resources and workloads in the cloud and on-premises. Number 1. Defender for Cloud Secure Score continually assesses your security posture, so you can track new security opportunities and precisely report on the progress of your security efforts. Number 2. Defender for Cloud Recommendations secures your workloads with step-by-step -step actions that protect your workloads from known security risk. Number 3. Defender for Cloud Alerts defends your workloads in real time, so you can react immediately and prevent security events from developing. Thank you for watching this video. Buy our AZ 900 Premium Questions with 50% off. Check link in the description.